Good morning. Welcome to Homecoming 2022. Go Bears. Oh, come on. One more time. Go Bears. Go Bears. Thank you. Um, I'm Stacy Kono. I'm the vice chair of the board of the Japanese American Women Alumni alumnae of UC Berkeley, and we're so happy you've joined us this morning for this panel. Um, before we get started, we're going to do a land acknowledgement in UC Berkeley's tradition of acknowledging the land on which we are holding this event and that we uh, want to honor the history of. So I'm going to read this through. Before we begin this event, we take a moment to recognize that Berkeley sits on the territory of the Huichin, the ancestral and unceded land of the Chochenyo Ohlone, the successors of the historic and sovereign Verona Band of Alameda County. This land was and continues to be of great importance to the Ohlone people. We recognize that every member of the Berkeley community has benefited from the use and occupation of this land since the institution's founding in 1868. Consistent with our values of community and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make visible the university's relationship to Native peoples. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty and will work to hold University of California, Berkeley, more accountable to the needs of American Indian and indigenous peoples. We know that many of you are spread throughout the world on the land of other peoples and would like to take the time to acknowledge the ancestral history as well. Okay. So again, welcome. Before we begin our program this morning, and since we're in person, I'm not sure how many of you have been in in-person events for over the last two and a half years, right? Um, I want to do a bit of a roll call. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out a group of people, and if you want to raise your hand, you can make your, some noise. You can even say, go Bears again, if you want to get warmed up more. Um, I'd love to first have our Jawa board members raise their hands. Woohoo! Thank you. Welcome. I'd love to welcome all of the incoming students who may be just starting Cal. Any of you here today? Welcome. Um, if, you gra if you graduated 2000 or after, could you raise your hand from Cal? Okay. Maybe online there's some folks. Oh. Okay. If you graduated between 1980 and 2000. Woohoo! Great. Okay. Um, if you graduated before 1980, could you raise your hand? Yay. Yay! Welcome. If you're a family member of a Cal student, you want to raise your hand? Thank you. Welcome. Um, we're, so, we're so proud to have you all here join us this morning. Um, Jawa, Japanese American Women Alumnae, is an official chapter of the California Alumni Association, and our work is to honor the recipients of scholarships and fellowships at UC Berkeley um, that come from our endowment fund. We're committed to growing that fund to support uh, students in their academic pursuits. We support research, education, and leadership development efforts uh, related to our community, and we seek to foster a community of UC Berkeley students, staff, faculty, alumni, and all of our community members in service to our alma mater. Today, we're presenting a panel to you, Different Paths to Leadership, Japanese American Women at Cal. And it's, a multi it's gonna be a multi-generational conversation of Cal graduates who will share their Store, unique stories and experiences with you of coming to Cal and, and what they're up to now in their leadership. First, I'm gonna to introduce to you our esteemed panelists and, and then we'll start the conversation. If we have enough time at the end, 
there may be questions, uh, time for questions. Um, but otherwise, I hope to have a really rich presentation and story sharing. Um, to my left, I'm happy to welcome Leslie Tsukamoto, who graduated in 1988 and, with her teaching degree and taught elementary school in the Vallejo Unified School District. I am so happy to be on the board of Jawa with Leslie. Uh, to her left is Dr. Lisa Hidai Tsuchitani, who is a faculty member here at Cal uh, in Asian American and Asian Diaspora Studies. She's the faculty co-chair of Asian American and Pacific Islander, uh, the, the Asian American and Pacific Islander Standing Committee and recently completed her term as the Jawa board chair. And finally, Tara, who's in the very last chair, received her bachelor's and master's in social work at Cal and has been active in, the local, com in local community organizations here in the Bay Area and the Berkeley Buddhist Temple. Please give them a warm welcome. Okay. Oh, I still have the land acknowledgement up. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to start with this first question. Since many of the folks here in the audience are alumni of UC Berkeley, um, and, and then we have someone also here who's just about to start. Um, can you each share with us what brought you here to Berkeley? And maybe we'll start with you, Leslie. Okay. Is, uh, yeah, is it working? Okay. Uh, well, um, I was a returning student. Um, both of my parents were Cal alums. My father received his degree while he was incarcerated at Tanforan. And my mother had to leave Cal also, um, but returned in uh, the 1960s to get her degree. So I knew that continuing the tradition was really important for them. Um, and they were very pleased to see that even though I didn't do my undergrad work here, I came back to Berkeley to get my credential. Um, I also felt that if I was going to get a credential, I should get it from the best institution that I could go to, so of course I came to Berkeley. Um, I went into the ERA program in the Graduate School of Education, and it had an extremely rigorous interview process, so I figured if they were going to accept me that I would get a quality education. Um, I knew uh, of a couple of um, faculty staff members, and, and um, they had been so highly spoken of that um, I was very anxious to be accepted, and fortunately, I was. Um, the, the program really was um, interesting. It was a, a very good mix of theoretical and practical pedagogy, and, and I think it prepared me very well for uh, a career change, which was very different. I had been an administrator with um, Pacific Telephone, but um, I left, I retired after 20 years, which gave me the opportunity to come back uh, and pursue something that I had always wanted to do. Um, but I must say that um, I always tell people, after, I had many challenging assignments in the business world, but teaching was by far the most difficult career that I had had. <laughs> but I certainly feel that I was well prepared to enter the, the teaching world when I left. Thank you, Leslie. And Lisa, what uh, led your path to Cal? Yeah, thanks for that question, Stacy. I wish I could say that I was as intentional as Leslie was in, in finding Berkeley. Uh, I actually was all set to go to a sister UC campus where I had a full ride um, and housing. Uh, then there was an intervention <laughs> that happened. Um, you know, sometimes you meet people in your life who see opportunities for you that you may not see for yourself at that time. And for me, um, the late Helen Mineta um, was one of those people, one of my mentors at the time, who had sort of encouraged me to see more broadly, um, you know, what possibilities existed. She uh, was my history teacher as a junior in high school. 
She's a Cal alum who is incredibly dedicated uh, and committed to the principles and values of the university, having uh, met some amazing people when she was here as both um, a student and a resident at the International House. Uh, and so she challenged me really to sort of think more broadly um, about challenging myself um, at an institution like this, and I, I'm very grateful for that, that mentorship that she's given me. I haven't looked back ever since, so. D did you know before you came to Cal what you were going to study, or did you come in like many students, sort of open to s exploring? I actually came in as a declared math major. Yeah, I know, and for those of you who know me, that's quite, I know someone's actually laughing in the audience about that. <laughs> Thank you, Marcia. Um, yeah, I actually failed my first math class that I took as an undergraduate student my first semester here. Uh, and I'm grateful for that experience, really. I mean, it was painful at the time um, when you're all set to sort of be a math major. Um, but I'm grateful because it allowed me to pursue um, you know, my passion or what I discovered to be my passion, which was the social sciences, so. Thanks, Lisa. And how about you, Tara? What led you to Berkeley? Uh, yeah, so I guess um, the first time around for my undergrad, um, I chose Berkeley because it was the only school that I had applied to um, that had an undergraduate social work program. And um, at first I was kind of debating between a couple of schools, but then one of my uh, teacher's uh, mentor, I was asking him and he's like, well, which one has the, what you're most interested in? And so he's like, oh, Berkeley's a no brainer then. Um, since you want to go into social work. Um, and then I had lots of family support as well because um, uh, my dad and grandpa had gone to um, Cal and also a cousin and uncle, so um, they were very <laughs> excited for me to go to Berkeley. Um, and then I found my way back. Um, I knew for sure that I wanted to come back to Berkeley for my master's in social work because I knew that Berkeley um, would also give me the opportunity to learn more about the meso and macro levels of social work and some more of the program, the policy, the community organizing, um, while most schools kind of focus on the micro, which I was also interested in, but I wanted to really kind of learn all the different pieces of social work. And so that, and then the social justice aspect um, of Cal really drew me as well. But yeah, thank you. Was there anything about your family's experiences at Cal? Did they ever tell you stories that also led you to go, oh, Cal's the place, the only place I'm gonna apply? Uh, not really, I mean, my cousin was really excited about it, like for triathlon and stuff, but yeah. Uh, I did have a friend kind of joke, we have a house divided license plate because my mom went to the other school and he's like, oh, we should color in the license plate a little more blue. Once I chose to go there. You chose Team Cal. Go Bears. <laughs> Great. Well, for those of you, if you're, if you're coming back to Berkeley for the first time in a long time to the campus, you may have memories stirred up. For me, just walking into Sproul Plaza, I was remembering tabling for student organizations, being out there during lunchtime, all the music playing, the, the singing group singing. Um, and just remembering all the people that I met. Uh, so this next question is about what your favorite memories of Cal were, what you've, you took away from um, your experience. So this time I'm gonna start with Tara. We'll go a different direction. So, oh. Can you read the question, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, let's see, can you share what your most memorable experiences at Cal were? Thank you. Um, I would say, I mean, apart from like, you know, having to bus everywhere because we had a free bus pass because Uber wasn't a thing then and, you know, trying to catch the bus when you're five minutes early but it's already leaving or waiting for an hour. Apart from like those, you know, fun learning experiences, um, I think for me, uh, my last year, my fourth year um, was really memorable um, because I joined, or I decided to kind of be on the board for the Nikkei Student Union, um, and I hadn't initially planned to join. Um, I was gonna focus on volunteering at Children's Hospital Oakland and in Oakland Unified. And, you know, I was like, kind of already had my plan, um, but um, 
my uh, friends were like, uh, Tara, there's no, no one you know, to take over some of these board positions, core positions for NSU, and they might, um, you know, so they were like, you should apply. <laughs> and so kind of reluctantly, I decided to help out with community service, and um, it ended up being a really great experience because I was able to build these really um, great relationships um, with other core members. Um, for some context, normally the core board was like 10 to 12 people, and that year um, there was eight of us, and half of us hadn't initially planned to be with NSU. Um, and uh, before, you know, it was, you know, it used to be like 50 more people, and then that year there weren't very many uh, members. But so we all kind of came together to really um, make sure the club was still there because it had impacted our lives a lot. We had made a lot of connections there. Um, and so this core board, we were kind of running around trying to do all these different things. We didn't know the um, ins and outs of like kind of the Berkeley side. We could program, solve, and you know, do programming and stuff. But other than that, like we didn't even know Professor Tichitani was our advisor. Things like that. I didn't either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? but, yeah. So um, yeah, I think uh, you know today, um, you know, I still see a good core of them. We still go and get food and you know things like that. So. Sweet. I mean, it sounds like it was particularly memorable because of the load of work that you were all carrying to keep it going. Would you mind for audience members who don't know what NSU and Nikkei Student Union is to explain a little bit about the mission? Yeah, um, so UC Berkeley uh, or Nikkei Student Union um, is a Japanese American, um, I guess, I don't really know what the current mission is, but kind of culture, cultural interest club. A lot of um, the activities are around Japanese American culture, as well as we do community service work um, and um, issues, and really just a community to come together and connect, and yeah, I don't Thanks, yeah, Jawa has actually partnered pretty closely with NSU, and it's been really wonderful to have alum and current students be connected in this way. How about for you, Lisa? <laughs> Memories. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> I, I just have to say before I start, Tara, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Apparently, I've been falling down on my responsibility as faculty advisor. I'm going to make sure I reach out to, to NSU and, and, and support them in their important work. Um, so, you know, um, I've got a lot of memories here because I have been both an undergraduate, graduate student here, um, and now um, I'm in a faculty role. Uh, so when I was thinking about an answer to this question, I just put a preliminary list of things down as a starting point, um, so bear with me. Uh, you know, I remember the first time I taught a class here on campus and was mistaken for a student in that class, which sadly doesn't happen now, I have to say. Um, I remember walking across the stage uh, at Zellerbach Hall over here. Um, to receive my doctorate as the first woman in my family to pursue and complete a degree in higher education. Uh, I remember participating in an honorary degree ceremony uh, in honor of 120 Japanese American students of the class of 42 uh, who were not allowed to participate in their graduation ceremony as a result of Executive Order 9066. Uh, I remember working with those alumni of the Cal class of 42 to realize their vision of the cherry tree grove over here by um, West Circle. Uh, and that was done to, to commemorate the legacy of Japanese American alumni here on campus. Uh, and uh, actually here in Poly Ballroom in 2019, uh, I remember um, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the Asian American and Asian Diaspora Studies program here uh, in front of a crowd of, and with a co community really, of over 500 attendees. And, and part of that celebration actually included the whole ballroom singing happy birthday to the late uh, Norman Mineta, who was having his 88th birthday um, you know, a few days afterwards. Uh, that was really wonderful, so. I'll stop there. <laughs> Those are wonderful, thank you, and it also just, demonstrates and creates the picture of the really rich history around Asian Americans and Japanese Americans here at UC Berkeley. Thank you. 
Leslie, are there any memories you want to share about your Cal experience? Uh, yes. Well, you know, my father was in that class of 42. So I remember being at the ceremony, and it was very moving. It was very important to him. Um, so I've always appreciated the fact that uh, the university had the foresight to um, honor them um, because it, it was very meaningful. Um, when I started in the um, ERA program, it, was, it struck me because about half of my classmates uh, were career change individuals. Um, I, we had a, a small you know, cohort group, um, and in my group there was uh, an, an architect, an attorney, and a nurse. And um, there were also a number of other people that were coming from the business world. So it was very interesting to me that um, I think it was apparent that not only was uh, uh, education so important, but it was worth people doing career changes, making career changes to go into education. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. Uh, and I think it just reinforced the fact that I felt that I've I made the right career move. Um, uh, I've been out of teaching for over 10 years now, but um, I, I think the uh, experience has served me well, um, and uh, I've, I've never looked back, so. Was part of your education, uh, or was part of the program also teaching in the cl classroom? Was there sort of an additional, what is it, right. hands-on? You have to do student teaching, um, and I think that's for most programs, whether it's through the state college or the university. Uh, you do uh, a six-week stint in a lower grade for elementary teachers, I and mean, uh, you do a six-week stint in a lower grade and uh, a six-week stint in an upper grade. So I had the chance to do some student teaching in the Piedmont School District, in a kindergarten class, and then a six-week stint in the Berkeley Unified School District in a sixth grade class. So that itself was quite an eye-opener uh, to see the difference in what happens in Piedmont versus what happens in Berkeley. Mm. So uh, that in itself was an education. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so again, this panel is about the different paths to leadership and leadership not being necessarily becoming the president, but leadership in the ways in which we're all making a difference and making an impact in our communities. So this last question is really about what, um, where you, uh, my glasses are really bad. Um, <laughs> what path, what path did Cal create for each of you to where you are now as you look back? You had your, the different memories of the work with the diff with different student groups and your programs, with just the experiences of connecting to your community. What what contributed to your leadership here? And I'll start with Tara again. Ah, uh, yeah. So I guess kind of um, as I said before, I didn't necessarily seek out leadership positions when I was at Cal. They kind of fell. I fell into them a little bit. Um, both between Nikki Student Union and the uh, social work undergraduate um, uh, group. Uh, they were both kind of about to die, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna help out with some other um, uh, fourth year about to graduate students. Um, and I think uh, because of um, my experience um, with, UC, with the Nikki Student Union, um, that's actually how I became involved with the Berkeley uh, Japanese American Citizens League. Um, because I was doing the community service work. They're like, oh, Tara, you also want to do our day of remembrance? I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so um, because of that, um, that's how I got connected um, with uh, Japanese American Citizen or JCL, the Berkeley chapter, and I've actually been a board member since then, um, leading kind of different uh, civil rights activities. Um, we've done um, some panels and really trying to do more connect education in the community and also connecting um, with other communities and how we can uh, support. Um, and then I think um, the other thing that Cal did is just by being where 
Berkeley is, I guess, where the campus is. Um, I'm Buddhist, and um, I stumbled upon the Berkeley Buddhist Temple in my first year, and so um, part of it was, you know, it was so close, so I could walk to the temple, um, and also um, how welcoming it was. And so Cal kind of was able to provide me both kind of those leadership opportunities and also like this community that was really supportive. And so now at the temple, I've been able to be involved with their board and their um, uh, community um, activities. And we also started a diversity committee um, in 2020. Thanks, Tara. Uh, how about you, Lisa? So I really uh, appreciate the, the framing that you gave us about you know, a definition of leadership, because honestly, I feel like uh, my career and, and leadership are still works in progress um, or evolving. Um, you know, that said, as a, a land-grant institution dedicated to a mission of public service, uh, UC Berkeley, I feel, continues to offer um, such a plethora, really, of opportunities to learn, uh, to grow, and to serve. Um, you know, the program that I'm located in, the Asian American and Asian Diaspora Studies program, and the Department of Ethnic Studies uh, resulted from one of the most violent and longest student struggles in the history of this country. Um, and given this history, I really don't take lightly the responsibility that we and we as faculty and students have um, to, to make visible, meaningful, and, and constructive uh, our engagement with racism, settler colonialism, right? Economic and political inequities, health disparities, climate change um, at the local, national, and global levels. Uh, for me, fulfilling this responsibility also includes service on campus bodies such as the Asian American and Pacific Islander Standing Committee. Uh, I have my wonderful co-chair here, Marsha G. Riley. Um, it's been such a pleasure to, to work in partnership with her um, on this. Um, we were created in 2019 as an advisory body to the chancellor and her cabinet to lift Asian American and Pacific Islander undergraduate and graduate student staff and faculty issues. Um, I also serve on the Latinx Thriving Institution Initiative Steering Committee and that is dedicated to realizing Chancellor Christ's commitment that UC Berkeley would become an, a Hispanic serving institution by 2027, joining five other uh, UC campuses um, who already hold that, dis or which already hold that distinction. Uh, and of course, you know, I, it's been wonderful to work with the Japanese American women alumni of UC Berkeley. I actually served on the board for over two decades, and um, I don't think you'll ever meet a more committed and fierce group of alumni uh, who are very committed to um, honoring the legacy of the folks who, who actually created the chapter and um, in service, of course, to our campus. Uh, so, you know, the work aside, I really think that um, what I have found most meaningful is the opportunity to meet some amazing people, um, and for that, I'm, I'm truly grateful, so. Thank you, Lisa. And Leslie, will you share with us a little bit uh, about um, what, uh, <laughs> what path Cal created for you towards your leadership? Well, my leadership uh, pales in comparison to what uh, Lisa has done here. Um, but I think uh, it, it really provided the opportunity for me to become a part of the Japanese American Women Alumni Group. Um, it, it started with my mother, actually. Um, she had been on the board for many years and uh, got to an age where she didn't want to drive, so I would drive her to the meetings, and then, of course, I would have to stay. Um, but <laughs> having been a, a Cal alum, I eventually uh, became a board member and have been for the last 12 years, maybe. Um, uh, so although I don't consider myself a leader, uh, I consider myself an active participant um, because I think it's a very, very important organization. And um, the, the history of the Japanese women that have gone to Berkeley is so important that we really need to uh, honor that, to keep that alive. Uh, and we do do that through our uh, endowment fund, um, 
by honoring our alumni, uh, outstanding alum every year. Um, hopefully we'll have uh, an in-person event this year uh, because we've had wonderful speakers. Um, and uh, if any of you are interested, I'll throw in my pitch for, uh, <laughs> check our website, jawaucb.org, uh, and uh, read all about us. So uh, I can't emphasize enough how important this organization has meant to me um, and to, to my mother uh, and uh, most of the, the women like Stacy that serve on the board. So thank you. Thanks. And you're so humble, Leslie. You just actually modeled leadership in inviting this audience to check out Jawa and, and be a part of supporting something greater. So thank you for all your leadership in Jawa that you've brought and all the mentorship and coaching and cheerleading you've brought to me in your role at, on the board. Um, maybe I'll add to just from my personal experience, I graduated in 1995, um, and my path to leadership, I don't think I would be where I am now without Cal. I um, currently am an executive director of a national nonprofit organization that's working to bring dignity and respect to domestic workers, nannies, house cleaners, and home care workers, a largely women of color population in this country that because of New Deal labor law were excluded from labor protection. So the current day conditions of low wages, little labor, little uh, like no health and safety protection, sexual harassment and on the job, discrimination, the, the reason that they cannot really pull down on those laws and rights that so many other workers can is because of the racism that excluded black workers from, from labor protections back in the 30s. So part of my work today is, has been to really um, end, end that exclusion and lift up the work of child care workers, house cleaners, home care workers in our families and in our lives. And I don't think I would be here without Cal because here I learned about uh, the history of racism in this country. Here I got to connect to workers' rights um, organizing. Uh, here I met with other students who brought their immigrant stories. Me, I'm second generation, third generation, so I had some distance from it, but was really able to um, learn so much that deepened my commitment to be a part of something greater and to spend my time to actually work for change, as all of us have in lots of different ways on the very local community level, on the university level, within our families, and, and for larger policy change. Um, so that's what led to my, uh, my leadership path. Um, maybe I'll just add another question on. Um, I know we have at least one new student in the mix, um, but maybe more have joined us since we started the program. I wonder if each of us have a piece of advice for new students coming to Cal. It could be a simple tip like, hey, make sure you check out Durant Square because there's usually really cheap food. It could be something far more profound. Um, it could be where the best, uh, where you can get the best copies rate, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, any <laughs> tips? And actually, if, if the audience wants to join in with tips too, think about it. Is there any <laughs> tips you've got? I'll let you, this is a, a surprise question to them. I didn't prep them for this one. So I'm gonna give them a few seconds to think about this. I think my tip would have been about, does Yogurt Park still exist? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> check out Yogurt Park if you haven't yet. It's on Durant and you can get really good soft serve frozen yogurt. Um, does any, do any of you want to start with your, your, it doesn't have to be a single tip, it can be multiple tips, to make the best use of their Cal experience, since this is homecoming. Thanks, Leslie. Um, I think like anything else in life, I think, um, you know, especially when you're a new student, you're very involved in uh, your classwork, your, your, your coursework and, and things, but I think it's important to reach out to other people, uh, to, to pursue all the opportunities that you can to, um, whether it's a join an organization like NSU, um, 
there are so many different student organizations, um, whether it's something that's academic or whether it's something that's social, um, you know, to really put yourself out there um, to, to get the, the best uh, experience that you can. Um, because you'll never, I don't think, have a better time in your life where you have an opportunity to, to join, to meet, and to learn. So take advantage. Thanks, Leslie. Um, I can go. Um, so I guess a couple thoughts came to mind. Um, uh, one was um, ask questions, uh, be curious, um, ask for help. Um, I think, you know, when, when I was an undergrad, I was really struggling in econ. I still probably would because I don't understand it. But um, I didn't realize I had a couple of peers that were like econ majors or minors, and I could have reached out to them, and I had no idea. And so, yeah, I, I would say um, whether it's your graduate student instructor, but if that's too intimidating, maybe a peer or maybe one of your friends has a friend. Um, so don't be afraid to ask those questions and ask, um, ask for help. Um, and that kind of leads me to the um, next point is you know, we're not really, we're not alone. Um, and we have, Berkeley's big, and so that can make it really intimidating, but something I've learned um, in terms of like leadership is a big piece of it isn't, you know, like leading, it's more the connections um, to others, it's more about um, the teamwork and collaboration and being able to be accountable for ourselves and others, and um, so I think my other thing that I've learned along the way, um, um, especially in Berkeley, was um, the importance of those uh, connections and teamwork. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. That's all wonderful advice. I wish I had had that when I started here. And it's a great question, so, um, so thank you for that. Um, gosh, you know, I, I would just echo what, what Leslie and, and Tara have said about um, you know, making the most of being here. It goes very quickly, I think. Uh, and there are a lot of opportunities to pursue. I guess from the, the more academic side, if I may, um, I would just ask folks to come to office hours and talk to us, because we're human beings and we are actually committed to your success. We really are. Um, just come in and talk to us, really. Or we're here to help. Um, as faculty. I think, too, um, what I have heard from students often, um, and that has been consistent, is um, like self-doubt is, is something that I think permeates this campus. It's so huge. It's so intimidating, right? We're the number one public university in the world. Um, I guess I would just ask students who are coming in and, and who are here to remember that you are enough. No one made a mistake admitting you into this institution. You deserve to be here. Own it, right? Don't wait until your graduation day to realize that, right? Um, I think that once you settle into that identity, um, you'll just be able to pursue so many more things uh, than I think you might imagine are, are theirs for you to, to imagine and, and grasp. So that would be my advice. Those are wonderful. Thank you all. Um, maybe, because I know we still have a little time on our clock for this program, and so many of you are alumni too, uh, is there pieces of advice that you would give the entering class into Cal? Again, it can be very deep and profound, or very superficial like mine and Yogurt Park. <laughs> we, we can pass the mic around. Football game related, since it's homecoming weekend. It could be housing related, since that is really hard to figure out in this city. Um, definitely school stuff, lessons you learned. Remember to go also to the discussion groups, which sometimes I didn't, and that's why I didn't do so well in a sociology class. <laughs> and there places to study. Oh, places to study? Anyone? Marcia, I know you have suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> the collective wisdom on the stage is really hard to add to. So I, I'm just going to say, I think 
my mistake coming in as a freshman was not exploring more. More resources, I think there's so many resources that I did not take advantage of coming through the door. Um, I think one would be surprised at how many resources are actually available to students on campus. You just have to look for them. Um, this isn't really a place that holds your hand through your career here, and so it's really taking initiative, I think, that's super important. Um, and good support networks, right, within your major and outside of your major. Um, I think having that friend support mentoring uh, relationship is what helps not just survive but thrive while you're here. Thank you. As you're all talking and thinking back to times, um, in my dorm, which no longer exists, it was at the top of Dwight, they took it down about 10 years ago, but <clears throat> there, are, there were six or eight of us who, after about a couple months in the dining halls, just gathered um, at, at mealtime, mainly dinner. Eventually made some trips to San Francisco in one or two convenient cars that someone had. And about 20 years ago, one of that group had a son who was graduating from Cal invited us to brunch to celebrate the occasion. <clears throat> and somewhere along that time, we also started gathering one summer weekend each year just to hang out and cook food and talk about times. And at the, when we were in the dorms as freshmen, I was a freshman, a couple of us were sophomores, there was no way that I would have predicted and said, oh yeah, you know, 40, 50 years from now, we'll be getting together once a summer for a few days. You just never know, so cultivate, as people are saying, cult cultivate relationships within the major, without, outside the major, wherever you find people, clubs, because those connections and relationships, you never know where they're gonna lead. So, and here we are, this many years on, and fingers crossed we'll be continuing, so. Wonderful, thank you for that. You're making me think of all the people I've stayed in touch with, too, through the years. Did I see a hand over here? Anywhere? Thank you. Just don't be afraid. Um, realize, uh, when I started, I thought, oh, everybody here is smarter than I am. But they're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got in, too, and what you have to say is as valid as anybody else. And so stick your hand up or join in and participate. And it's amazing what will happen. Um, and take advantage of programs. Like I, I did years ago, I did Cal in the Capitol, and I did, um, and for 18 years, my family went to the lair of the bear. And the connections we've made from that have been astounding. Um, take advantage of all that this place has to offer and you'll be so glad you did. Here, I'm back here for my 50th reunion. It's been 50 years since I graduated. And I'm still married to my husband, and, <laughs> <laughs> and um, we've, we met through, a, through a, a program, and we went to Cal the Capital, and, and it's taken us all over the world, and our Cal connections have been amazing. So. Take advantage of it. I, I had my first exposure, I was telling the, this fellow earlier today, at 11 years, my dad went to Cal and my uncle was a stroke on the Cal uh, crew team and Gregory Peck was his stroke. And ever, every year after that, Gregory Peck sent a Christmas card to my uncle for the rest of his life. You know, those kind of connections you just can't buy. So take advantage of them and explore. And, it, and you know, you use them, because you never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah, but just tell them hi. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know who Gregory Peck was. So. <laughs> 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 
I would add, um, consider study abroad, the study abroad program, uh, although that takes you away from Berkeley and all that Berkeley has to offer. Um, it can be a really amazing experience in its own right. I was an undergraduate here studying zoology and anthropology and ended up doing my junior year in Kenya. Uh, so I was able to uh, pursue those academic interests, uh, both through studies and then just getting out on safari as often as possible. Um, the other thing I would just briefly put in a plug for the Discovery Initiative, which is a new campus-wide effort uh, from the highest levels of the administration on down to try to uh, create pathways uh, for new students to find their calling, find their passion, and engage in that both academically and personally, and then culminate with sort of a capstone project by their, their senior year. Um, and it's, it's forming um, in various ways right now. Um, one aspect of it is called Berkeley Connect, which is a separate program that's been around for about nine years. Uh, not every department has a Connect office, so you'd have to check and see if it works with your major, but the idea for Berkeley Connect is to pair an undergraduate with a graduate student mentor who helps them navigate both the academic and the personal sides of being at Berkeley. But there is a website for the Discovery Initiative, I think it's discovery.berkeley.edu, so new students, check that out. Thank you for that. Any other tips, Ad pearls of wisdom? Oh, and the way back. Yes, thank you. Um, mine is just um, be open to exploring things outside of your major. Again, it's along the theme of um, exploring the campus and because we just went to um, Professor Filipenko's lecture yesterday, and I'm like, I had him in 90, I think 91, my daughter had him last year, and it was, he was still phenomenal, right? And so I think of, I had Ellen Dundies from anthropology, I had Marion Diamond um, from the biology department, and I wouldn't have those opportunities if I just stayed in my lane of my, of my major, of just being a psych major, so definitely, go outside and explore and just do it. Thank you all for joining in on this conversation. Uh, we have just a few minutes left, but I open it up for questions and answers if, if folks have any questions. Okay, I have a question of the panelists. If you had a million dollars today and you could do anything you wanted to do with it, what would that be? <laughs> a billion dollars, what would you do? What would you do with it? Provide student housing. Yeah, that's such a loaded question coming from you, Lynn, as someone who worked in the development office here for many years and was the first, you know, woman identifying rally committee chair, right? I'm sort of torn as to how to properly respond to you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to think about that a little bit, but appreciate the question. <laughs> This one's hard because most of the things I'm thinking about would probably take more than that. Like <laughs> reform child welfare would be great, but I, I'm working in child welfare, so I know how much it costs to uh, run it. But uh, um, I think something, I don't know if this is still within that price range, but if we could bring more um, opportunities for um, like learning about, well, I know there's already initiatives for this, but we're having trouble getting them through, um, but like um, more opportunities to learn from each other and like across culture, across um, just, just so we, yeah, like more diversity um, opportunities to learn about um, different religions and cultures and values um, and to connect. Uh, something I've learned is um, some restorative justice efforts and like the community building piece can really help prevent a lot of the things that we're experiencing like racism and um, 
conflicts in general, because once we can understand each other as humans, that'll really help bridge that. So something in that. I don't know what it would look like, but. <laughs> uh, I think I would give the $1 million to a student committee to decide how best to steward the funds. I think uh, the students here are so amazing and really the reason why I stay connected to campus. I'm an accidental academic. I was not planning actually to be a faculty member when I grow up uh, and I'm still sort of easing into that role. Um, but students here are truly um, brilliant in so many ways uh, that I think they'd be able to steward that money best. Those are good responses. Oh, you. Oh, there's a follow-up. No. Okay. Oh, you want me to answer that too? Oh, a million dollars. I think housing is is very critical. Um, we're in such a crisis um, for students to be able to afford housing. Um, actually, I love. I'll just say plus one to all of those. I love all of them. They're. they're this is a brilliant panel. Um, well, uh, what we may do. Because oftentimes, you know, we didn't start Cal time, so we didn't start 10 minutes after the hour, so you could get, but you still probably need time to get to your next class. So we'll end a little early here. I'm going to um, put this uh, slide up so that you can be in touch with JAWA, uh, J A W A U C B dot O R G, for the Japanese American Women's Alumni of UC Berkeley, stay in touch with us, learn, sign up for notifications, find out about the events that we have going on. Um, and then finally, the closing slide for the homecoming 2022, let's practice Go Bears a few times. Go Bears! Go Bears! <laughs> Go Bears! We're gonna win that football game this afternoon. Go Bears! One more time. Go Bears. Okay, so go Bears. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon.